morning. And now let's get into a little Q&A, which is the best part of the show. All right. Let's see. Mr. No Good, Cash App covers the cost of transferring Bitcoin to your wallet. Sure. Sounds good. When moon? Years. Uh, uh, Tejju said, I noticed you use your Ethereum network Matic and not the Polygon network, which is much cheaper and supporting a Coinbase now. I just have to switch any reason because I want to keep things simple. I want to just do it that way. You can bridge everything over and do it that way, I suppose. I just don't want to do it. So that's it. Uh, any gas fees for moving that? Yeah, probably. So let's see. You know, the Coinbase wallet, or the Coinbase desktop app, It's always a problem because I can't find the the transactions themselves. Let's see. Maybe I can hear. No. So some exchanges they don't they don't have any any fees. And some do. Let's see, maybe up here. Uh, let me check on this one. Hold on one second. Yep. So the fee was 1.4 Matic. That was the network fee. So I just lost 1.4 Matic transferring things over. That's it. Okay. David Sosa, nothing is rules free. No, but I mean, everybody in crypto wants everything for free. That's for sure. Uh, is Coinbase Pro still a thing? It's called something different. Uh, I forgot what it is, but uh, I don't use it. I just use the um, the option, just the uh, dollar cost average, set it and forget it, and just kind of transfer things as, as time goes on. Yeah, Coinbase Advanced Trade, that's it. Hmm. Any way to leave USD for a limit buy and feel safe? No, nah, probably not. I mean, you have to go to the terms of service and make sure that, uh, you know, it's not going to, if, that's the whole thing with FTX, right? If FTX was not commingling of funds and they protected you so they would use their funds for their business operations and not your funds for their business operations, then when they went into chapter 11, you wouldn't be affected. So as far as like the terms and conditions for Coinbase, I believe it says that your funds are not commingled as far as I read it. There was a change in language not too long ago where they talked about how in chapter 11 you weren't protected. Then all of a sudden they changed it back. So it looks like um, everything's fine for now, but uh, it's up to you. And I can't protect everybody for everything. So like if you want to leave a limit order, that's on you because you're a trader. Have fun. But for me, I'm just going to buy it, use the exchange, and then take it off with my, with my wallet. Ooh, hey, look at that. It must be hurting. Coinbase sent me a message limiting one service to 20 bucks a month instead of 40 bucks. I would definitely jump on that. Mm. I thought you couldn't place limit orders on Coinbase One. Has that changed? I have no idea. I don't, I don't do that stuff. I'm pretty sure on the, what's it called? Coinbase, Coinbase Advanced Trade. I'm pretty sure you can do it on there. And it's the same. It's, it's not like a separation. It's just a, a, click of a click of a button. <sighs> Gijo George, other than Mel, well, WMT, which other privacy investor are consider investing within the Cardano ecosystem? I think that's a, those are pretty good ones right there. Uh, I wouldn't delve too far outside of those. I don't know. That's not just, that's not, just not for me. I mean, I'm getting kind of stretched anyhow on these, on these projects. Coinbase Advanced Trade, that's it. Oh, thank you. Every time I see you look, you'll be more handsome. It's just all about lighting. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, eh, let's see. What are your thoughts on Pi Network? I have no thoughts on those. Any concerns about wire and crypto? You know, Paul Barone from Paul Barone Network had a video on uh, wire. And um, 
Like he said, it's a big deal and it could be a big deal. I don't see it as that big of a thing. I don't see it near as big as a thing as for Genesis to go into chapter 11 from the digital currency group, which would then affect uh, Grayscale as they have their 50% uh, discount for what they're offering for paper Bitcoin, essentially. So, I mean, wire, wire is just the ability. It's just a uh, payment processor. And that's all it is. So like... Like I take a look at it, like for my website, I use uh, uh, PayPal and Stripe. So if somebody can't use, like let's just say for some reason, PayPal just implodes and is like, sorry, we can't process your transactions. No big deal. We'll just use Stripe and that's it. So I don't know. 40 bucks, <laughs> 40 bucks is nuts. No, it's not. If you think about it, if you're, it depends on how much you're buying or selling, right? So if you're, I mean, you can just see like every dollar cost average that you do. If you do it, like if you buy four times a month, it's not for you. It's that, that's, you're right. You're exactly correct. It's, it's, it's too expensive. But if you're somebody like me who buys every single day, Bitcoin, or buys every single week on certain alts or every single month and other alts, it's a, it's, it's a service that uh, pays for itself. And also when I sell things, I take profits along the way. It totally pays for everything. So it's all about you. It's like using tax software, like we use CoinLedger. So CoinLedger is great if you have like, you know, hundreds or thousands of transactions. But if you've bought Bitcoin in February and sold it in May, you don't need CoinLedger. So that's just how it goes. Because it's just got, you just got two. <laughs> okay. YouTube will de uh, we'll decentralize, yeah. Central, censor, censoring all life savings into while pushing poison. The craziest part is you haven't figured it out yet. Best get on Rumble. Look, man, uh, I've been on those platforms. And I can just tell you that it's it might grow. It might be awesome. But on every other alternative platform, I'll get like 10, 20 views. And like this video itself will get over 10,000. So if you want to get the message out, that's fine. That's what I'm trying to do. And uh, unfortunately, YouTube is the biggest game in town. That's just the truth. Again, doesn't mean that the other, other platforms can't grow. Yeah, Kofi, sure. I mean, it might be great. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Some people are. I don't know what this... Bains, hi, Rob. Do you need also in the VS to be the registration again? I don't know what that means. Why no thoughts on Pi? Because I don't know what Pi is and I don't invest into it. And the only thing I talk about on this channel is the things that I've invested into. So you can ask me again. The answer is going to be the same. I have no opinion one way or the other. Thoughts on Theta? I do invest in Theta. It's just, you know, as as good as a project is, it's just um, sometimes it just takes time and it might never it may never fully realize, you know, it's mass adoption and potential. You know what it's like? It's like that great restaurant down the street that you go to and you're like, wow, there's nobody here. This is awesome. And then you have like a great food. It's great service. The cook comes out or the chef comes out and says hi to you. And, you know, like this is a great place. This will probably blow up. And then six months later, it's 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 gone. And why is it? Well, they couldn't scale. They couldn't build. They couldn't grow their business. They couldn't get customers. Even though it was a fantastic experience and a fantastic restaurant, sometimes businesses just don't make it. Am I saying Theta's not going to make it? No, but it's just it's just the re the realization, especially in crypto. Like, like I know people like they they get behind a product like this one is so good. It's going to make it. It's I'm a hundred percent sure. Dead. So, like me personally, I just don't understand why people don't diversify a little bit. Not financial. Yeah, you know what? Diversification, I can say pretty, pretty calmly that uh, that's a pretty good financial advice right there to diversify a little bit. I don't think anybody's going to sue me for going, Rob told me to diversify and I lost all my money. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Thanks for the, the Cosmos. Yeah, you're welcome. Chucker. It's funny. Algorand's. Um, it's 
What's your favorite beach? Uh, I like the Louisa era, Louisa area, and um, East Love Verde area. That's just because I play volleyball over there. <laughs> and Louisa is a nice area just to get away from people. I use Trust Ball for Cosmos. You do that. Oh, okay. Hey, Rob, do you need to also do the registration? No, you don't. So Banners Broker is asking about Sweatcoin. And you need to do this, what he's talking about here. Do you need to do the registration again? So if you sign up and you're new to signing up to the Sweatcoin app and you get in there, if you use my link, you should autom you, you will automatically be on this list. But if you're... If you've been, if you've had Sweatcoin for a, a long time before December, then you probably have to s click on right here and enter your your Sweatcoin app username. And this isn't a, I mean, this part here is no way it can scam you, unless like for some reason you get you you reach down and go, hey, this is Sweatcoin. We need your your uh, your mnemonic phrase for your ledger device because we can't verify your <laughs> your your username or something ridiculously stupid like that. So yeah, be careful. No one's going to ask for your mnemonic phrase or your private keys or stuff like that. Let's see. Eight is just a store of value. I don't even know if it's that. I don't even know if it, Cardano is really a store of value, quite honestly. I don't even think, honestly, I don't even think Bitcoin's a good store of value. I mean, in the short term, in the long term, sure. You know, I mean, I don't want to get into that debate, but I mean, short term wise, again, can anybody deny this fact that if you're in a third world country and you make 200 bucks a month and you invest into Bitcoin and it goes down 50% in a month, that that's a great store of value to feed your family? I don't think so. However, let's say you're in developed countries or even a third world country and you put your money into uh, Bitcoin and let's say you're in Venezuela or you're in some some place, Greece or whatever else. And of course the fiat system collapses to zero. Is that a good store of value? Yeah, probably so. But unfortunately, it just depends on your area, right? For Americans, good store of value, you put it in there while well, we're inflating at 7%. Okay. Well, for this year, I mean, Bitcoin's down over 77%. So again, is that a good store of value? I think over time, uh, it will be. And it's, it's uh, proven to be pretty well, but it's just a time frame. So now we take a look at Cardano. Is Cardano uh, a good store of value? I don't really think it's that great in the short term. Again, if you're investing in something, you're in a third world country and uh, you have fiat going to zero. Sure. Pretty good. Not the greatest. I would have put in stable coins, quite honestly, but uh, that's just me. If I got access to Cardano, why, why wouldn't I put it into uh, USDC or Tether? Or whatever that one for uh, the other stable coins that are out there. So anyhow, um, Cardano. Two of my favorite products are built on that. Meld and World Mobile Token. And uh, good news, I'm going to have Mickey Watkins on the show next Wednesday. I don't know if we're going to do it live. We probably should do it live. That'd be fun. Just to talk about the things that are going on. Again, connecting the unconnected. They're over, I think they're, they're getting at two and a quarter terabytes uh, per day for data usage. It's all built on earth nodes and these pods and of course Cardano. And then of course uh, with Meld, I think they're gonna do pretty pretty good thing as far as a decentralized lending platform because anything centralized, you know, is kind of pretty much sucking these days. People just can't get out of their way. That's a better way to say it. Whole coin nerds got a all coin nerds should have done that whole segment that I was blabbered about. The longer the timeline, the more likely Bitcoin is your safest buy. That's true. That's a good point. This is, I'll show you this picture of what I'm talking about. It'll make sense in a second. Hold on. So it is right here. And you can see this. Of course. Let me get rid of this. Overlay. 
There we are. So think of it this way. 20 bucks in 1980 could get you a heck of a lot of stuff. I mean, as far as like grocery shopping. And what one Bitcoin in 2011, which is worth roughly, I mean, 2011. Yeah, roughly 20 bucks. Between like 15 and 30 bucks, somewhere around there. I mean, one Bitcoin could have bought you the same amount of stuff. Now, fast forward 10 years, what can 20 bucks get you? In 2000, it wasn't much. And 2021, or assuming 20 years, couldn't get you much. And then right now, you could, you'd be lucky if you get two cartons of eggs for 20 bucks, <laughs> honestly. And then in 2030, I mean, who knows what it's going to be worth. But in, again, 2020, 2011 to 2021, let me do some quick math here. It's about 10 years. It goes from buying you a bag, a cart full of groceries to buying you a Tesla, $60,000 plus car. That's a good store of value. As they say. So, all right. Well, that's that. Time frames, right? Eight. Robbing. Oh, yeah. So it's a good point. I always forget about this. So my green screen's broke. And uh, my green screen drained all my water out of my pool. So I got some people working on that today on a Sunday. I, I didn't want them to come, but they was like, well, we got to get it done today because we got too much next week. Yeah. J2 Day says, have you watched the great crypto scam on YouTube? It's a great test. Yeah, I watched part of it. Some of those things it might be not valid points, but points to consider. Look, it's all about what you think it is and what you think it's uh, actually worth, right? Some people will say, you know, I don't know. They take a look at gold and silver. Gold and silver, I mean, talking about intrinsic value. It just depends on on how you look at things again and what you think is uh, would be considered valuable per se. So, yeah, there's going to be and it's funny thing because like like the crypto scams. You're going to see some more of those probably and some more op ed pieces and articles and mainstream media covering it throughout the bear market. Then all of a sudden, when the bull market comes back, they just disappear for some reason and everybody talks about how crypto is the future and it's going to be the next great thing it's amazing it's like uh and then everybody talks about how great it is so sure yeah sure yeah every bear market does get uglier uglier not there that's just how it is kino says where do you recommend to store world mobile token so for me i just keep it in the vault on the vault world mobile and if you go to the website, you can just you can just create your wallet. It is a hot wallet, unfortunately, but uh, that's the best place for it. I'm not sure if you can store it in Ledger now or in Daedalus Wallet. Not for sure. Is there any safety issues in Puerto Rico? The drivers. Nah, that's about it. Mm. Bitcoin and Litecoin. Ba, ba, ba. Ah, Jeff's here from Florida. Do you split your crypto hold on a different wallet every 500K or so? How much money do you think I have? I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, just I just do it randomly. We'll just say that. So maybe someone breaks in and steals on my ledgers. They don't think, hey, I got more than 500K in here. Uh, should have downloaded Sweat app long ago. It's great. Yeah, it works out pretty well. Uh huh. It's a good question. Is there a place where I can find a list on what I can stake from Ledger? Most everything, essentially. And uh, because everything, 
everything's built on Ethereum just about, right? So if it's an ERC-20 token, pretty good chance you can store it on Ledger. And that's like most of the stuff out there. I don't know if all those are going to make it, but... <laughs> make life simple. Amazon coin is a scam. I think Pi is too. Just a heads up. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Why not post on YouTube and Rumble? You can do that. It's the same thing. I just don't see the point. I don't. Maybe if the, I can eke out some people to view it over there that just cannot stand. Uh, they can't stand YouTube, I guess. Do you have an idea how to DCA World Mobile Token? It's not available on centralized exchanges that I know of. Well, let's find out. So there's a couple ways that we'll, to DCA, which is just you can set it up like in Coinbase and just go, okay, I want to buy 40 bucks of Bitcoin every day, or I want to buy 25 bucks worth of Ethereum every week, and it'll just generate that every single time frame. Or you can just say, okay, I want to buy World Mobile Token once a week, probably on this specific day, and pay this amount. And just set a reminder in your phone. That's what I've done before in the past. It worked out pretty well. But to answer your question, where is it available as far as World Mobile? The best and the easiest way to find out where any kind of token is at is you can use CoinGecko or the other one. I, uh, whatever it's called. World Mobile Token. Hey, they're ranked 312. They were 298 not too long ago. 18 cents, it's pretty good. And uh, all you want to do is Ah, uh, yeah. So, you've got overview, markets, circle data, tokenomics. That's new. Markets. You click on markets, they'll tell you where it's offered. So, it's on a centralized exchange, Huobi, Mexc, it's on KuCoin, BitMart, Bitru, and Sunday Swap. That's where that's all at. And you can even see the volume. Wow, Huobi's only almost got a million, $845,000 in volume. And the rest isn't that much. 157000 on Sunday swap. That's a good amount. And then tokenomics. Yeah, not available. I will say that tokenomics tab is pretty cool. If you go like, let's go to Solana and click on tokenomics. Not to pick on Solana, but it's fun sometimes. Don't worry, I own it too, so... Everybody who loves Solana, don't freak out. So, okay. What's the token allocation for Solana? So that's what you get. Foundation gets 20%. The seed sale, VCs, they got 25% at the top. The founding sale, I don't know what the difference is. Founding sale, 20%. And then the team got 20%. So let me do some quick math. 20 plus 20, 40. Plus another 20, 60. Plus another 25, 85. So 85% is uh, in the hands of few, I guess we would say. And uh, let's take a look here. So let's pick something else. Let's, let's pick Cardano. It's like they're always fighting. I don't know if they have the tokenomics. What do they do? Jeez, cry me Christmas. Staking rewards, 30%. The team gets 11, I didn't know that. The ICO. The ICO, correct me if I'm wrong, it was for everybody, not just VCs. And here's the, even the supply schedule. Staking rewards, less burn fees. Oh, it's every year. Ah, and here's the founding rounds. 2.6 was raised in the public sale, 16 public sale, 14, pu it's all public sales, so. I just felt kind of fair. There's one more I want to look at, which was Algorand, because people talked about how they have an issue with their tokenomics. Oh, but before I do that, let's take a look at ApeCoin. I'm curious if they have it. Okay. 
Treasury, 47. Eh. NFT holders get 15, the people that already had it. Launch contributors, 14. I wonder what that means, launch contributors. It's probably like uh, influencers. I'm guessing. I don't know. Yuga Labs, probably the ones that created it. Charity, that's pretty cool, 1%. The founders get eight. Woo. Interesting. Okay, back to my original. Algorand. Sweet Mary and Joseph. Snake would have bit me. Tokenomics. Let's see. Ah, it's unavailable. It's a bummer. Hey, I wonder what uh, what Matic is. Polygon. Since I'm so heavy on it, should refresh my memory of what the tokenomics were. Hmm. That's interesting. 19% was on the launch pad, which should have been uh, public. Staking rewards, 12%. That's pretty heavy. So let me see something. Huh. Total supply and max supply are the same. Found What? The foundation got 21%? The ecosystem to 23 was Okay, you got to build on it, I guess. Advisors, 4%. That's reasonable. 16% for the team? That seems kind of high. Just going to ask that question. It's interesting what you can take a look at. You really d dive down into it. Interesting. Well, put your comments below. That'd be... See what's been said. Uh... Oh. Oh. Actually, I did mean the registration for Coinbase. Do it again. I was wondering if you have to do it in the U.S., no, I think once you register for Coinbase, you're set up. But when you do the Coinbase one, if you do that, you have to uh, link it to your bank account and they take it out that way. So you shouldn't have to, for Coinbase, you shouldn't have to, you just register once and that's it. Let's see. Everyone forgets in a bull market. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so Josh, you just remember that uh, that list that we had, this one right here, it gets updated every three days. So it should be refreshed tomorrow. Do you stake Polygon? I do not. Yes, I should, but it, whatever. You know what's a great website to see how much money you're going to earn for staking rewards? It's called Staking Rewards. <laughs> stakingrewards.com so uh, let's see looks like this I like this website because I can just kind of see like is it really worth it for me you know to take do, deal with the hassles it's not that hard you can do it you can stake within your ledger as well that's what I do with uh, Cosmos so like if you just go there and you can see like all the different cryptos that are available for staking and the rewards. And it'll tell you like, hey, if you put in, let's put in uh, 100,000. Okay. So 100,000 at 5.6% annualized term for one year. You delegate Matic. The monthly is 459 bucks. It's pretty good. And of course, for the year, you get 5,500. Now, if you've got only 10,000 Matic, you get 45 bucks a month and 550 bucks a year, which if you think about it, that's pretty good for doing absolutely nothing, just letting it sit there. And since I have it in my ledger, I don't have to give up my keys. Same thing with Cardano. So you know what? I should be staking my Polygon. You're right. It's the one thing I'm not staking right now. Just haven't done it. Daniel says, Rob, which products that you're staking have covered your initial investment solely from the staking rewards? That will be 0.0, .0 so far. So not yet. Nah, Lucas is here. Brad and Town is starting to explode. Ooh. Money bags. Nah, I got a lot of my funds tied up in real estate right now. Which is fine, which is a lot easier because if I had a lot of my funds tied up in crypto, I'd be pretty agitated to say the least. But at least with real estate, you can just go, well, you know. 
short-term rentals work or they don't work. Then we go to long-term rentals. Okay, long-term rentals don't work. Now we just sell. Yeah, that's how it goes. And that's it. How do you do taxes? I don't. I'm a tax evader. Don't tell the IRS. Just kidding. So I use a uh, coin ledger and uh, I have a real anxiety about taxes. That's why I talk about it on my channel, which gets very few views. <laughs> I must add, it seems like when people hear about taxes, they're like tune off. But with coin ledger, like with the API integration and you just give them read access, not read and write access. It tells you specifically, you can only give us read access. If you give up both access, then we reject it and we go from there. So they give you, you, you do an API integration. I use it, you know, I just integrate to all my exchanges. It pulls the data in and it says, okay, here's what you owe. Here's your capital gains tax. Do you want to send this to your CPA? Yes. Click. It goes to my CPA. My CPA says, you made a lot of bad trades. Just kidding. Shouldn't say that. And she says, okay, this is how much you owe. Put it in there and that's it. So uh, I'm not a guy to, to look through countless transactions and spreadsheets. I got stuff to do and I got, I've only got so much time on this planet. I'm not going to spend it dealing with stupid taxes. I'm going to pay a company to do it for me, which is reasonably priced. I might add coin ledger. It's like a hundred bucks. If you want to generate a report that you can send to your CPA. And of course you can sign up right now for free and you can take a look at your profits and losses links in the description. So that's how I do it. And people, everybody's different. If you've done like five trades, you don't need that. That's it. I would recommend to get uh, a specialist though, just because. Ledger or Trezor. I never use a Trezor. I use a Ledger. I did get this though in the mail and I'm going to use this. I'm going to do that giveaway for this Arculus thing. And uh, it's like a, it's like in between a hot storage and a cold storage. I haven't really understood it that well. Anyhow, I'm going to give these away and they gave me one for free, which is pretty cool. Do you watch CoffeeZilla? Who doesn't watch CoffeeZilla? That guy's the most, uh, he's the most talked about uh, person, I think, in the last week or so, mostly because of Logan Paul, which I got to tell you, good for him. Good for him holding his feet to the fire and hopefully he, he pays people back. Yeah. Cool coin is MIT. Uh... <laughs> Thank God I didn't buy celebrity projects. That's a pretty, that's probably the best piece of advice. That's a, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to call it right now. That's investment advice. Don't buy celebrity projects. That makes sense. Rob, will Polkadot come back from the dead? Yeah, probably. I, I, I think it will. Polkadot and their parachains and things. Going on. It's, I like what Polkadot is doing. I like what Avalanche is doing. I think Avalanche has got a more of an upside. Well, maybe. Who knows? I'm also the guy that told you that Bitcoin was going to 150,000, and that didn't pan out either. So, yes, I only do half of the shows. Dan does the other half, and we set up our green screen as much as possible. We make it dynamic. Sometimes I uh, genetically alter it. Genetically alter it. I alter it so you can see my dog walk through. I almost said dogs. Ah, crap. Now it is free stuff. Now they do look way better. The A team. Mm. But who is the entity who replies in chat as Dan? That's Dan. He's inside. He's got the other part of the computer. He just logs in remotely. Lazy bum. Usually drinks too much. Hmm. Have you ever looked into Elron? I have. Just didn't really understand it, so I never invested into it. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's check Shiba tokenomics. This ought to be fun. I don't know if it's in there though. And then also we'll, we'll check Dogecoin. <laughs> Shiba Inu. Man, I hope it's here. Okay. 
What the? That's hilarious. 50% of the time. But didn't he dump it? Or didn't he sell it all? Yeah, I think he sold the majority to help fund something. And then the rest was Uniswap liquidity. I didn't know that. Huh. That's funny. Let's take a look at Dogecoin. Oh, really? That's a sucks. That's a bummer. That was fun. Paris says, wouldn't you expect Algorand to go up pretty high with him being so in line with U.S. regulations? Nah, not really. And really, it just comes down to, you know, who's using Algorand and and what projects are building on, on Algorand and how big is it moving for mass adoption? Who is invested into Algorand besides retail investors? That's really what it comes down to. Just because, like, again, with, with a restaurant analogy, let's say the uh, restaurant is, is super efficient uh, for uh, dealing with the local uh, food and beverage uh, county services and going, hey, we're really aligned with everything you guys are saying. You know, we're on the straight and narrow. You know, but our food sucks. You know, it's not going to go through. Oh, yeah. Coinbase has a debit card. Makes you use like a Visa card. Interesting. Rob, I'm broke. Thanks. A lot of us are broke. It's okay. <laughs> broke E. Hey, Rob, I'm staking Cardano with Dan. Are you going to create other staking pools like Dot? No. We did Avalanche for a year. That's okay. We'll just stick to what we'll just stick to what we're passionate about. I'm, I'm embarrassed to show my crypto taxes. OCB. You know what's great about that? You can say, hey, all these losses that I have here uh, just help me out to roll these over as much as I possibly can. Staking on a ledger is still a risky because you, you're giving permission on third parties. That is uh, if you're using a third party wallet, like there's different ways. So like with uh, with like near protocol, for example, you can't stake it through ledger. You have to have a near wallet, which is a hot wallet on the Internet. But you can connect your ledger to that wallet itself. And the only way you can open it up to send near is through your nano ledger so there's that and then um i mean i think it's not as as risky as say like uh, staking ethereum ethereum apparently the shanghai protocol update is going to be happening end of february early march so people are going to be able to unstake but those you know those slashing uh what is it the slashing not the slashing protocol but the slash of rewards, slashing rewards, reward slashing. It just seems very risky to me. Uh, and you just have to put it up there and, you know, hopefully at some point you get to unstake. Now, just recently, we figured out that it's going to be February and March. I thought that was a pretty ballsy move for people to do that. Just to say, yeah, I'll stake Ethereum. Those are people who really believe in Ethereum. I don't believe in it that much. Love all you. Hey, all right. NFA. Any questions you guys have for Ben and uh, James? Put those in the chats. One of the questions I'm going to have is if they're if they're buying any crypto and which ones they are. I know Ben's answer pretty much, unless something changed, but I would like to see what Guy says. Yes, exactly. Yes, also exactly. Yes, yes, he did donate it. I don't know what he donated to. I know he didn't burn it all. I know he donated some. I don't know what it was. <laughs> all you got to do XRP as well. I'm good. 
So this is a great question. Rob, how do you handle Celsius losses? Tax write-off thoughts, looks like total loss. So here's the weird thing, is that moving crypto between wallets is not capital gain or loss. And because they're in chapter 11, it's gonna be, it's gonna be up to your CPA. So what I'm gonna do is I reach out to CoinLedger, they're gonna have their CPAs come on. They're gonna give you their expert opinion about what to do with Voyager and Celsius and FTX and BlockFi and all those things that looks like they're either gonna be liquidated. I don't think they're coming out of chapter 11. I know Celsius talks a good game, but who wants to follow that company? I just don't think it's going to happen. So I'll get these guys on and they'll answer that question the best of their abilities. But it's um, it's really going to come down to CPA and your preference about what you do. Me personally, I'm just going to write it off as losses. I can't take all those losses in one year. I have to roll those over. So we'll see. I still got six figures stuck on Celsius myself. Which is so funny when uh, Alex Mashinsky comes on my channel and says, it's your crypto, it's your crypto. We don't do anything with it. It's yours. You just lend it to us, but it's yours. Okay, our terms of service says something completely different, but whatever. <laughs> it is a pool guy in your green screen. Dynamic green screen. It's tough to pull off. That's a good question. Blockchain research. What's your main ways to get crypto info? Uh, news or channel or sites? What's your daily or weekly routine? So the best place to find the most up-to-date information is probably Twitter, honestly. Uh, the news or channel sites, like they're a little bit, there's a little bit of a lag right there. And my daily, I've got a, a couple of people who work for me and they find me all this information. And I take a look and they pour through it and I curate it, and then I give it to you guys. So that's how I do it. And then uh, that's it. And you can look on. You can look for. Um, you can look through on-chain analysis. But the thing with on-chain analysis, is you can kind of cherry pick and and uh, exclude or include different data points, and you can make it be whatever you really want it to be. Quite honestly, so I don't really do a ton of on-chain analysis. I mean, I still look at. I mean, if we take a look at Ben's site and look into uh, look into Bitcoin.com. There's some great data points to be to be had, but for every data point that's out there, it can be manipulated, and that's just uh, how it is. So you can show those things, just kind of try to back it up with a little more information that you can find out in the real world. That's it. Buterin gave 50 trillion to an India COVID-19 relief fund set up by Polygon founder Sandeep Nalwa. Perfect. Ali says, how will the Shanghai update impact the price of Ethereum? A lot of people think that the price is going to collapse because everybody's going to sell their Ethereum. I don't think so. Again, you're going to see a drop in price, but it's not going to be a collapse in price. I think some people are going to sell because they're like, hey, everything went down. I got to sell. But I don't think it's going to collapse the price to like 400 bucks or something that people are calling for. I think there'll be a dip. Some people will sell and some people will say, oh, they're selling. I should sell mentalities, right? But if you are a person that's trusted enough to stake your Ethereum and had no idea when you can unstake it, you're probably a pretty big believer in Ethereum anyhow. You're not going to do too much. That's it. <laughs> what do you mean, Rob? All we have to do is dump all our ETH on Coinbase and stake it there. Nothing can go wrong. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Get out of here. Thanks for stopping by. Soccer Zah says, it's safe if we put the coins in MetaMask. Remember, MetaMask is a hot wallet, so it's always connected to the internet. So it's up to you to do those things. Also, um, with MetaMask and Infura, the one that pretty much lays down the protocol, uh, they get to record and report on your data that you're doing those things. And there's been a, a couple of different news articles about that. So just be careful with uh, MetaMask because it's not as it's not it's not that private. I'll tell you that. I don't like to use it at all. Period. Like if people want to pay me in something, I'm like, here's my here's my USDC address or my Tether address or my Bitcoin address. Bitcoin's best, personally. For some reason people like stable coins. 
cryptos are us equals hopium are us. Remember, George will probably be right in the long run. You, I mean, as time goes on in like 2025, 2026, George will probably be right. All the things that people invested into and he talks mostly about Bitcoin. I watch his show every so often. Give him a thumbs up. Um, and uh, that's it. <sighs> Ah, Lou Rivers. I'm a PRD attendee, network crypto events in Ireland. Just my own. Crypto Mondays, nah, not really. I am, uh, sometimes I get a little antisocial, don't do too much. But uh, yeah, when the next meetup, we should probably do this week. I could really use a drink. So I'll let you know. It'll be at the smokehouse probably. Nice outside bar. Great, great brisket. I love food. And uh, we'll sit around and talk shop yes i do some long streams i won't yeah see there you go haven peck says i won't i won't sell my ether are you nuts exactly this is the thing when people like say oh why would i why would i sell it you don't have to sell it and this is the thing i don't think people really want to sell their ethereum so when the shanghai protocol comes into effect and people have the option to sell or not i don't think they're going to sell the majority People will sell. That's how it goes. If you, need, if you need that kidney surgery, you better start selling. Ah, John's here. <laughs> no. I need oxygen, too. Uh, can't go up, George. I don't use it. I don't use, I don't use the trust wallet. I don't, see, I don't see a point for for me. I don't see a point. A lot of people like it because it's, it's ease of use and good user interface. But uh, yeah, Daniel's got a good point here. Uh, I say that I can say that liquid staking in Cardano is way better than Cosmos. On Cosmos, if I stake, I'm stuck and cannot participate in other things. It does. It does. If you look at, correct me if I'm wrong, but my opinion. Well, it's my opinion. I can't be wrong on an opinion. My opinion is this, Cardano knocked it out of the park for staking. They just did. They just crushed, just crushed it. It's easy, right? You can use Daedalus or Yoroi or whatever kind of Adalite type of wallet. And there's other ones coming out. Uh, I used to use Daedalus, it's a long time to download, whatever. But when you stake, you can, you can unstake anytime you want to. And I mean, the rewards are just paid. You don't have to give out your your uh, private keys, you don't have to do anything. Uh, it's it's actually, you retain your crypto and it's awesome. And then when you unstake, you unstake immediately and then off you go. Now the rewards are in rears. So like when you stake, it might take between three and five days, depending on the epic. But uh, I thought it was the best thing that they ever did, quite honestly. Be easy, John, let's not, let's not go crazy. Uh, my youth is soul and so, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Can you search free in Europe? <laughs> Nothing is in free unless you're a central bank. Yes. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, that's the problem with Cosmos. I mean, 21 days. I, I, I can understand the whole thought process, but... I think it's just easier and it's a better customer experience to not do that. Okay. Oh, Kenny Surgery is free in Canada, as are all surgeries. I don't know the time frame, but uh, you'll get it. Rob, your thoughts on Gala? I own Gala. That's it. All right, time for beers. All right, buddy. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like, all that good stuff. Uh, tomorrow, this week's a busy week. Let's see who the guests are going to be. Hold on. Sin City Crypto, Alaska Gold Rush. Oh, Mr. Nola, who was the lawyer for uh, trusts and wills, will be joining us on Tuesday. Mickey Watkins on Wednesday. And I'll be on Token Metrics live stream on Friday. Interesting. Well, that's my week. Anyhow, that's it for today. 
like and subscribe. Thanks so much, everybody. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it.